Our friend and colleague, Diane Macedo, has a brand new baby at home, but this week she's back to talk about her new book, The Sleep Fix, it's called, and it's out now. And it's all about a former insomniac's journey to finding better sleep. Diane says her, quote, low point was when Ambien stopped working for. Well, that's reassuring, and Diane joins me now. Diane, it's great to see you. We miss you. Oh, good to see you too, Terry. I miss you all too, but you know, I have to say that scrumptious little baby that's keeping me home, it's hard to get away from her. All bad, congratulations. So, sleep, a former insomniac. How did this all start? What, what made you want to take such a deep dive into the topic of sleep? Well, I mean, it started because I had my own problems for years, and, and I started off dismissing them, and, and then I, they got so bad I couldn't ignore them anymore. So I started trying all of the typical sleep tips that I, I read about everywhere, and that just made me worse. I read popular sleep books, again, got worse, and uh, as Will mentioned, I even tried Ambien, and Ambien stopped working for me. So I kind of got desperate, and I started then reading, after I got screened for sleep, sleep apnea, I started reading sleep textbooks and things like that, and and that's where I found the answers that worked for me, but that sort of just opened up a new door and I started going down this rabbit hole and interviewing experts and reading all this research about not just the problems I had, but other common sleep problems that keep people awake. Because ultimately I was surprised at how different the information that helped me and the information I was learning about in this research was from some of the more common things that we hear about in sleep in the zeitgeist. So I felt like someone had to get this message out there. And, and after a couple of years, I guess I decided that someone had to be me. It's a great idea. So the sleep fix, what is it? <laughs> uh, it ultimately depends on what it is that's keeping you awake. And so chapter one of the book is called Identifying the Problem. And, and it's all about you know, that aspect of things. I think a sleep diary is a great tool to do this. And there are several others uh, laid out in the book. But I think one of the myths that's out there is, you know, that there are going to be these top 10 sleep tips for everyone. And if everyone does these things, they're going to sleep well. And I think for those of us with insomnia, that ends up becoming problematic because we do all these things. We still don't sleep well. That makes us more frustrated. And that frustration makes it harder for us to sleep. So you end up in this really lonely, horrible cycle. And I want everybody to know that it, that's not your only option. There are other answers out there. So I'm, I'm getting on in years, getting a little old at that point where your sleep pattern changes, I guess, and I'm noticing that. Uh, and, and for you, did, did your research help you get better sleep? It did, and it's interesting because I had already kind of fixed my insomnia long before I wrote the book. But I talk about this moment where my husband, out of nowhere, just sort of blurted out, and this was while I was writing it, he just sort of blurted out, I can't believe it's not a thing anymore. And I was like, well, it's not a thing. And he said, you know, your sleep, uh, your sleep problems. I thought that that was just how you are and we're, that's something we're just gonna have to live with and now it's just not a thing anymore. And at this point I hadn't had insomnia in like two years. So I at first was kind of confused as to why he was expressing the sentiment now. Uh, but I realized that throughout the process of writing this book and learning not only so many more sleep tools than the ones I knew before, but also the foundation for why they work, the foundation behind why these problems happen, Having that knowledge has helped me to kind of tweak these things as my life continues to change because my life is very different now than it was four years ago. And yet I keep continuing to be able to use these tools so I continue to sleep well. And that's something I wanted to parlay in the book. It's not just a list of here's what you're supposed to do. It's let me explain to you why this problem is happening, what's actually going on behind the scenes. and. Thus, you understand why this solution works and how to maybe tweak it. So if you can't do it perfectly exactly the way the rule book says, then you can adjust it so you're still keeping the spirit of it, but you're living your regular life too. That's great. So understanding your sleep in general and one's own sleep in particular is, is the key. Now, I, I can't help but ask, so you were figuring out this sleep thing just as you had your little ones, which are, who are the, the anti-sleep, right? Aren't they... Uh, they're the wake-up pills. Yeah, there's an months. irony in releasing a book about sleep when you have a two-month-old at home. But I'll tell you, I'm very grateful that I addressed this because I addressed this right before I had my son, who's now three. Uh, and I'm very grateful that I did because, yes, babies keep you awake. But, you know, right now, for example, with my daughter, I wake up, I tend to her in the middle of the night if she needs me to, I put her down, and I go back to bed and I can fall back asleep. And that was something I couldn't do before. So had I not fixed my sleep problems before I had my children, when they were waking me up throughout the night, I then would have been up all night. 
And now, thankfully, that's not the case. So even though I do have little ones to sometime attend, sometimes attend to in the middle of the night, I can still get a decent night's sleep because I'm able to fall back asleep. Oh, that's great. That is the trick in, in some ways, getting back to sleep. So what's the one thing you want someone who is struggling with sleep uh, to get out of this book? You know, I want people to know that they don't have to struggle. I think many of us dismiss our sleep problems as, you know, that's just the way I'm built. And, and that's just not the case. If you have trouble falling asleep, if you have trouble staying asleep, or if you feel sleepy all day, like you need a nap all day, or you're that person who falls asleep in waiting rooms regularly, and you don't know why, because you think you're getting enough sleep, those are signs that something is wrong. And chances are that something is fixable. And so I want people to realize that so they can start addressing this, because honestly, addressing these issues can absolutely change your life. And I'm not being dramatic here. In some cases, it can actually save your life. Hmm. Well, that's great. Uh, you just sold the book to me, so uh, and and maybe maybe you'll sign it when it, when I when you're back. And oh, it's great to have you back with Terry. us. Can't wait to see you. Congrats on the book. Thank you, Terry. See you soon. Well, the Sleep Fix is out now, and tonight Diane is hosting a virtual launch event with Ginger Z at 7 p.m. Eastern. You can find out more on Diane's Twitter page. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.